this is Nishchal Dua, and welcome to the Remote Work Summit 2020. I'm very excited to have with me Christine Chojala, the head of Americas at Workplace by Facebook. She's here with us to talk about the future of workplace communication, and welcome to the summit, Christine. Thank you. I'm so pleased to be here. Likewise. Uh, I, th I think we could really learn a lot from you, especially on how the entire structure of workplace communication collaboration is changing. It's evolving, especially in current times and how to keep up with not just the best practices, but also the best technology and tools to go around with it. But let's just quickly start off and you could give us a quick background about yourself and workplace, uh, the, the application itself. Yeah, so um, thank you again for having me. Um, Christine Trudella, I've been at Facebook for over eight years now and evolved my career there with the company, spent um, a good amount of time on the ad side of the business and recently came over to Workplace from Facebook. Uh, we're a SaaS company within Facebook right now, building out a, a suite of B2B um, ecosystem platforms and tools. Um, before Facebook, I, I spent time at Yahoo, at WebMD, um, um, advertising.com AOL and had a whole career in marketing research and economic research before the internet started. Interesting. And uh, if you're okay, we'll just dive right into it and mm -hmm. uh, pick up the crust of the matter. Uh, what do you think about workplace communication, what workplace collaboration in the first place, and how do you think the entire technology is evolving, uh, especially with the current times? What, what are you seeing uh, at this point in the market? Where do you think it's going to go? Yeah, well, you know, in terms of just the importance of communication and collaboration technology, that's certainly coming to the forefront right now, given given what's happening and with the, you know, so much of the workforce now um, in a shelter in place and working from home and not even in the US, but globally. Um, I think even before that, we were starting to see the trend of more and more people working from home to adapt to flexible, the needs for flexible lifestyles. and. You know, I think Gallup did a report a year or two ago that showed that over half of uh, knowledge workers are working from home at least one day a week. And this was, you know, not only recognized as something that was really valued by employees, but it also, you know, was, um, you know, was really meaningful to the bottom line. It actually reduces attrition. So I think COVID notwithstanding, that's a trend that we would continue to see. But COVID has really brought this all front and center right now. And I think, you know, in many cases, um, you know, there are some fundamentals in place that allow people to stay connected, still communicate, get work done, um, you know, when they're in a remote situation like this. Um, we've certainly seen a lot more activity um, and, and workplace being used even more than ever with existing customers and have certainly been um, filtering in some demand here as, as a result of this. But I think two things are really becoming very clear in terms of, of what's missing and where I think a lot of businesses have been caught really flat-footed and having to put you know, entire work populations into a shelter in place so quickly. And the first is just the inability to connect with everybody within an organization. And, um, you know, that is, um, you know, right now it's it's really pretty much limited to email and even email sometimes doesn't reach every single person that's working in, in an organization, particularly if they're frontline employees that may not have access to corporate email addresses. So one is there's just this lack to be able to connect with every single person that works within an organization. And that's some, that's, uh, you know, a real gap. And then the other, is that while there are, there are some great um, tools out there that I think are pretty widely adopted to do synchronous communication and work, there's really um, not good adoption right now of asynchronous platforms, right? So how do we really collaborate together and work together um, in something that isn't always just a sequenced fashion? Um, and, and that's really the way real work gets done. So there hasn't been a really good adoption of a way to simulate the work environment, not only from a synchronous perspective, but also an asynchronous perspective. And what we really are finding companies are, are, are needing right now is a way to essentially create this virtual workspace um, to replicate what would be happening in an office right now. And, and an office is, you know, you know, a, a combination of the synchronous and the asynchronous communication and, and collaboration amongst teams. Absolutely. So, so essentially what you're saying is that there are two major gaps that we're observing here in the market right now, two major gaps, especially when it comes to communication collaboration. Uh, first is that it doesn't connect everyone within the organization, especially if these are frontline workers. So most of these people do not have a corporate email address and they get left out. And the second is the imbalance that we are facing between sync and async communication. So we definitely have a bunch of tools on one side, but we still need to have the right process, the right applications to cover the other side of this equation as well. So where does workplace fit into this entire overarching landscape exactly? What, what is the entire concept and idea here? 
Yeah, so Workplace from Facebook is a communication and collaboration platform. It allows businesses of any size to um, broadcast communications out to an entire organization, again, reaching everybody. It allows uh, businesses to collaborate and work together, whether that be entire teams that are distributed across different time zones and geographies, or even in small groups, or even one-to-one -one, um, one -one groups. And then it also um, automates workflows and and processes through uh, leveraging bot technology on our chat tool. Um, it does all these things through features that are pretty commonly um, commonly known to folks, our newsfeed, groups features, and uh, messaging or chat. Um, it's a three-year-old business within uh, from within Facebook. It's a, it's a SaaS business essentially within Facebook. Um, been around, like I said, three years. We have three million paying customers on the platform right now. It's you know companies like Starbucks and Walmart, uh, Nestle, GlaxoSmithKline, AstraZeneca. Um, we, we have representation and, and um, clients across pretty much every industry you can think of and also a very strong uh, Workplace for Good nonprofit um, arm where we, uh, we provide Workplace for Free for qualified nonprofits and, and government entities as well. But really at the end of the day, um, that's, what, that's what Workplace for Facebook is. But, but our mission at Workplace is to bring the power of community to everybody at work. And similar to Facebook's mission of bringing community to everybody and helping people connect, we really want to ensure that we're connecting entire organizations. Again, going back to what I just referenced on what is what we're seeing, you know, in real time here as being a real gap is we want to make sure that we democratize access of, of information for everybody in an organization. And, you know, Right now, with about 80% of the global workforce um, being a frontline or not connected to the traditional IT stacks that maybe a knowledge worker or somebody that sits at a desk with a computer would have, this is really, really critical. This is a, this is a huge gap and really leaving a lot of the work population, global work population, without a way to communicate and connect um, with, with the corporation. And we've done extensive research on, on the frontline population, both in the UK and US, and know that you know this is a group that feels um, um, you know, that feels voiceless. They don't feel like they have a conduit back to share ideas or to ask questions or connect with leadership or to connect with, um, you know, connect with the corporation, anything outside of, of kind of their core team or their core manager. And so we know this is a, is really an important um, problem to solve essentially. Interesting. So, so in the end, it all comes back to creating some sort of a social environment, social work ecosystem uh, for your larger organization, make sure that the flow of information remains synonymous and synchronous throughout the organization. And this entire power of communities being leveraged because you've got tons of people out there, but the right amount of information is not reaching them, especially uh, at the lowest tiers, right? So that's the whole game here. Uh, so how, how does this really impact or how does this really help or work in the case of a remote organization, a distributed team, a hybrid team structure, so to speak. So if there are virtual teams out there, are there specific use cases for them? What can they do to better implement their uh, workplace communication collaboration practices? Yeah, well, I'll just, um, there's so many use cases and I'll share some examples, um, you know, as we continue our discussion. But I think first and foremost, the really, the most important thing is that in this mission to connect everybody and ensure that we are, you know, democratizing access to information, um, that sounds really simple and well-intended, but it's um, it's it's not easy to do, right? There's a couple of things that you have to make sure that that you're enabling in order to connect everybody. Um, the first is that it's easy to use, right? You, if you're going to put a the a tool into the hands of people, you have to make sure that this is something that's going to you know be really really intuitive, easy to use. Workplace literally requires no training. It is built off the backbone of Facebook, the consumer app's core functionality and features. It's highly intuitive to use, and we find that when we you know, when we distribute it and companies adopt it, it literally requires no training, which for a, you know, for an enterprise level um, tool of any sort is, is, um, is a bit of, a, of, of an anomaly and a unique position that we have in the marketplace. The second is it has to be accessible to all. So again, um, you know, these are, we're talking about large populations of the, of the workforce that do not have uh, laptop computers, desktop computers, a place to go and receive information. So what is that, that common denominator technology or platform 
platform that everybody is going to have on them, and that's a mobile device. So it has to be accessible on a mobile device to be successful and to be adopted. Um, Workplace is like again like the Facebook family of apps. It is a it is a mobile first application. You do not have to have a corporate email address to um, to be on Workplace as part of a corporate instance and in, in an enterprise. And so we're really lowering the barrier to entry and being able to onboard these um, these these frontline workers or the you know the the majority of the population that's not connected. And the third, and this is kind of a nice to have, but I think it's really valuable when you think about um, you know having something that's really feels personalized and feels really relevant to you. So of course you know the content that people um, that that employees get um, in news uh, in in workplace is all very relevant to them based on you know their job, what they're doing, who they're connected to. Um, so that there's that level of personalization, but then it's also a tool that is, um, you know, you can enable um, you can enable the functionality to have it um, translate, auto translate into your native language, and that really starts to create this sense and feeling of empathy within a company that they're communicating to their employees in a language that feels most natural and normal to them. So I think just for starters, it's really really important to um, you know as you think about enabling communication collaboration with every single person in, in an organization. Um, I think it can't be, um, you know, it can't be overstated just how important it is to adhere to those three core principles in terms of just the accessibility, the availability, and making it personal and relevant for people um, to see the adoption. You know, in terms of, I'll just reference maybe a couple things that we've seen in in COVID right now because we are we are at a fever pitch in terms of how workplace is being used um, across, um, you know, all, all of our customer base. And I I will mention that the World Health Organization is a workplace customer they've been using it to stay connected with their organization um, you know they they put their pre press briefings um, online on the COVID group every day and they answer questions there so it's been a really they've been very vocal about what a great tool it's been for them during this but you know a couple of couple of use cases in terms of how we're just being see how we're seeing it used um, right now we do see a lot of companies creating a specific COVID group that is open to everybody in the organization so that they can see in real time relevant and pertinent information about how the company is handling COVID, what it means for them. Uh, we've seen a lot of executives really leaning into our live video feature. So really looking to connect with the organizations, provide some kind of reassurance to the employees and, and be able to communicate directly. And, you know, in many cases, these are executives now that are speaking, you know, not in a coat and tie behind their desk, mahogany desk, but, you know, probably, you know, in their sweatpants, you know, in their living rooms. And it's a really great thing that's been humanizing these executives you know, at a time where there's a lot of anxiety around what's what's next and what's happening. Um, we've seen some really great examples. Scoot Airlines in Singapore, um, they, they did something really innovative where they leveraged a bot, again, bot technology in our chat platform to essentially survey remote employees that were going into, um, you know, high risk areas just to survey them and see how they were doing check in on them. And the response rates, they had almost 100% response rates to this, just a really great way to, to check in on employees and see how they were doing and get that feedback from them and, and, and obviously check in on their health and safety. Um, and then the other thing that we've seen that I think has been kind of interesting, and I don't know that we that we would have predicted this, I think the other examples, we, we certainly um, are part of our best practices and how we're communicating to clients, but we've also seen um, customers using Workplace to, um, to train people while they're uh, working from home right now. And again, you know, this is this is an area where we're really focused on building for the future is is um, building out a suite of knowledge management tools. And so, um, you know, we're, we're really pleased to see that this is an early use case that's being adopted where, hey, how can we leverage the time where we've got people at home, they may not be doing their typical day to day work, how can we keep them engaged? How can we use this time in a way that will, you know, allow us to really when when things um, get back to normal, Hopefully sooner than later, you know, we'll we'll be that much better. We'll be that much more skilled up when we do. Absolutely, those are some really interesting examples, especially the WHO case. That's that's really inspirational. Uh, yeah. and, and I personally believe, you know, the whole COVID situation is definitely going to redefine things for almost all of us. The world that we come out to see in the next couple of months will be very different from what we knew earlier. And that means a lot of the definitions of what it means to be at your office, what it means to be working would change essentially. And with that, there'll be a lot more newer opportunities as well. So I see that, you know, a couple of very interesting points that you raised is how this entire structure of communication in an organization, especially as you grow it larger and larger, it should be accessible to everyone uh, at each and every different level of the organization. It should be very personalized. So it should have those kind of 
uh, features that allows it to uh, convey the right information at the right time because communication overload is also one big problem that a lot of organizations face. You know, you use uh, an application like Slack and it keeps buzzing all the time. You've got hundreds of hundred messages. It just takes an entire day for you to clean up the messages themselves. So, so I see where, where we're going from here, you know, and those are some really interesting use cases. I want to talk a bit more about culture here, you know. So, so what role does communication play in the overall culture of an organization? How how does the workplace application behave in that context? And uh, where do you think the entire conversation around culture for most startups and for most enterprises is gonna be like uh, when they start thinking about uh, you know a post-COVID era communication model or collaboration model? So where does it fit into the overall cultural aspect of an organization? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, look, at, at the end of the day, workplace is a platform it's a tool and it will amplify whatever culture a company wants to amplify right and and that you know i'm not placing judgment on what that would may be but that's the that is the you know kind of the code or the, or the sauce of of what then workplace is able to do is is bring that to life um workplace tends to be um be seen as a very critical tool for companies that really embrace um an open and transparent culture one that really um you know values hearing uh, input from the field um from from other workers um, wanting to have that two-way dialogue um, and and really um, you know build build a, a community essentially within their organization. I think you know again going back to our mission of wanting to bring the power of community to everyone at work. I mean, I, I don't think many people want to work for a company. People want to be a part of a community, and you know, workplace is the fastest way to turn a company into a community. And and we feel you know really strongly about our ability to do that. I mean, we we will talk to. Um, you know, companies that have implemented workplace and they'll say, you know, we've just seen incredible increases in employee engagement. And they do, you know, micro pulse check-ins to, to understand the impact of, of um, you know, what having more access to leadership and, and having more transparent conversations, um, you know, does in terms of just making people feel connected and more engaged. I think the other thing, you know, in terms of just cultural changes or things that I think that, that workplace is, is really strong in amplifying is just this ability to align people and and again you know this becomes really critical when you're not all physically in the same place and so COVID aside you know we still are living in a world that's highly distributed with large pockets of you know any employee population being in remote areas and, and the ability to you know quickly gain alignment um, across teams and cross-functional teams is really critically important and of course that's core to the collaboration um, functionality within workplace but um, one of one of my most favorite features of the tool that that I don't think gets talked about that much is just the org chart and so um, you know you're able to go into a workplace and see visually um, the, the people, the human beings that you work with or maybe don't work with. You can see who reports to them, who they report to. You can see, you know, um, things that they've published, things that they're working on. You can see their skill sets. You can see their recognition through their badges that they've earned. So you get this really great profile of who somebody is within your organization beyond just, you know, within finance, here's the hundred people that work and this is somebody's name and telephone number. You know, you can instantly connect with them through chat or you know their phone number or email you know whatever mechanism that you want to do to communicate with them but it's a it's a really incredible way to very quickly understand not only who people are within the taxonomy of an org structure but also you know who they are as, as people interesting and uh, you know this is one particular thing that you said in the beginning that I'm just gonna quote here again and something that I really liked hearing from you uh, people don't like working for a company they really want to work for a community right they want to be a part of a community so if that's the, that's the ideology that you have in mind if that's the way that you think about uh, the bigger problems that you face in, in today's world or maybe going forward as well then a lot of difficult decisions will become really simple so think of how you can build the right community you can build the right culture it all comes down to making sure that you've got that kind of transparency uh, again like you said with the org structure uh, it all comes down to making sure that people have access to the right information at the right time uh, and in a very transparent manner and at the same time it's really really important for the management to be able to drive change very quickly so there's a way where people at the highest levels can reach every other level you know in, a, in an instant and make sure that the right information reaches them it just makes the company more mobile it just makes you more flexible it helps you react to a lot of uh, situations a lot of crisis 
uh, really quickly. So, so those things are really important. I feel uh, interesting. Now, how do you think the entire uh, this this crisis that we're going through is going to change the work structure? What what, what would be the future of uh, technology ICT be in the post pandemic era? What, what kind of a lasting change can we expect from where we were earlier versus where we could be in the near future? Yeah, well, first of all, I have to, I just have to thank you for acknowledging my, my quote, and I have to cop that I stole that from someone internally at Facebook, because I thought it was just so well articulated. So I have to give, give credit where credit's due. But yeah, I mean, look, I think um, we are clearly, um, this is going to be an inflection point for, for so much. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, this has clearly proven that people can work from home and can be productive. They can get work done. And I think there was, you know, depending on, you know, the industry, the company, the individual, um, there was um, probably some some questions around that, around can people be productive and, and um, get work done in their homes? I think, you know, in terms of what this actually does when we come out of the other end of it, um, I, I have to admit, I, I don't know. And it's, it's, you know, I think there's a lot of speculation, you know, not only in terms of how we work, how we interact with each other, what the economy does, there, there are just so many unknowns. I think, you know, I, I guess I have a I, I have, um, I have, I have a hope that um, two, two things. Um, I think, one is just just that we um, embrace more flexibility in the workplace. Um, you know, as a mother who you know has uh, you know this kind of dual job of CEO of my house and and someone that works at workplace um, from Facebook. You know, I I appreciate flexibility and being empowered to make the decisions around when I'm going to get my work done and when I need to be around for my family. And um, so I really hope that through this you know kind of painful experience and and now that we have proven that you can be effective and get work work done at home, I'm hoping that this opens up the doors for much more flexibility. I mean, think of the impact of not maybe having to fly everywhere to have face-to-face -face meetings with, with customers, clients, um, not having to spend time on the road. I mean, you know, all you have to do is look at some of the, you know, the, the recent media, you know, and the Google Earth photos of like what this has done for our missions. It's been incredible. And so not only are we doing something that's better for, you know, for the, for, for Mother Earth, but also, you know, we're getting time back, you know, I'm not spending two hours a day just sitting in my car. So I really hope that's one thing is that it, it, it kind of culturally shifts our perception of what it means to be productive, what it means to drive impact at work and providing people with flexibility. And by the way, if we don't do this, the, the next generation of workers will. This is very important to millennials and gen, gen, uh, you know, gen Zers. So um, I think it'll be really important. The other thing that I think has been a really interesting insight coming out of this is it's really blended the professional and personal lives of people. Um, you know, typically I would show up in the office. I knew, um, you know, what, what my coworkers' spouses' names were, or if they had children, maybe I'd see a picture of those children on their desks. But, you know, now I'm having these virtual meetings and I'm, I'm, it's a portal into people's homes and into their families. I see kids hanging off, you know, their mom's shoulder or, you know, a dog barking. Um, you know, I've met these spouses through virtual happy hours now. I mean, people are, you know, seeing, you know, seeing my, my living room, my dining room. It's, it's just a really interesting blend. And I think it's really, I think it's bringing us closer in a way right now. It's kind of a surrogate for the social, you know, the social interactions that we would normally have. And I think that this is, you know, this is, I mean, my biggest takeaway from this is going to be, I feel actually closer to the people that I work with now because they have seen me in kind of my most personal and, and vulnerable state. And, and I've seen them. And I mean, that's just, you know, I, I guess I'm grasping for silver linings in this in any way that I can. But I, I think, uh, I think that's, that's one thing that's going to be really interesting coming out of this. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's always good to look at the silver lining because uh, with every challenge, there, there comes an opportunity. And I think this is the opportunity for all of us. Like you said, remote work works. It's here to stay. And uh, if we don't do it, the next generation is definitely picking right. it up, right? And uh, I was just talking to someone who said uh, that, that the students who are graduating college, graduating school right now, for them, this is going to be the new normal. For them, this is going to be the de facto way of getting yeah, work done. Right. So, you know, it, it's here, it's, it's, it's not the future, it's the reality now. Uh, so, so I just feel, you know, uh, we've got a bunch of um, leaders and managers who are watching this right now, who are attending the entire conference summit. Are there any tips that you can share with them uh, on what are the best practices, any particular actionable item that, you can, that they can probably work on or anything that they can help them guide through either this particular stage of the crisis or whatever they're going to implement in the near future. So short term, long term, anything at all, any sort of tips uh, any guidance you can probably offer to the managers and leaders who are 
uh, on this summit right now. Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, and, and happy to follow up and, and share with anyone, we have a couple of resources right now. I mean, that's primarily what we want to do right now as, as Workplace from Facebook is just be a resource because this is a time when, um, you know, two things are really, really important. Information, access to information. A lot of people, there's just a lot of anxiety around how much is unknown. And so being able to provide people with information um, is, is just so incredibly important right now. And then access to, to people. Again, this this human interaction, even if it's done in kind of a surrogate way through technology, is just, I mean, it is what is keeping people people, um, you know, kind of kind of hanging on and, and able to see the next day. So we provide a lot of resources in terms of the best practices um, for how to connect and, and stay um, stay in communication with people. Um, and those are all available on our website. Um, and so happy to, um, you know, either follow up with more information or, or direct people there. There's some great resources. We're also doing a lot by way of webinars um, and have a calendar of events that are coming up, everything from how to, um, you know, how to work through COVID crisis comms to how to enable your uh, organizations from the very small to the very large to do remote work. I think in general, um, again, though, just in terms of, of best practices, um, I, I can't understate the importance of connecting with people, especially if you are a manager or a leader. Right now, there are people that are feeling very vulnerable, very anxious. Uh, maybe they are single and they're in very small apartments in New York or San Francisco or Los Angeles. And, um, you know, they're trying to be productive. They're trying to still show up for work. But I know that it, it, it can be very mentally taxing. And I think, you know, again, where we've seen people really leaning into our platform right now is having those executives do live Q&As or town halls or just go live to provide those reassurances assurances to people um, and give them access back back to um, back to leadership. So, um, you know, no matter what tool you use, I think that's just a, a really important best practice right now, which is just to stay very close to the people that are that are at home and, and trying to be productive during this time. Yes, definitely. I think I think that's one of the most important factors here, because uh, often what happens is, you know, as managers, as leaders, we tend to think of everyone as someone who can be easily motivated and, and can continue working without any breaks. But that doesn't really happen. Everyone's human at the end. Right. So it's very important, like you said, uh, to have frequent live Q&As, to have town hall meetings and to have uh, what I think not no work conversations. Right. So certain uh, broadcasts which are just about sharing what's really happening, talking on a very human level and not really talking about work all the time because you definitely need some time off. Everyone needs it, especially in today's world. So, yeah. uh, you know, we created just I'll, just an example of what we did on my team. I've you know got probably 60 people um, across North and Latin America. We created a group on Workplace that's called um, the Micro Kitchen. And um, and the micro kitchen is is, uh, you know, kind of a metaphor for us all gathering around in the workplace. And um, we have a question of the day and it's always some kind of provocative question like, you know, if you could have dinner with one person living or dead today, who would it be? And by the way, respond in a GIF, you know, because a GIF is always going to you know make it make it better. Uh, but then we've also said, you know, like, what's the one thing that you're going to, you know, it's the first thing that you're going to do when the shelter in place lifts. So we, we try kind of light, um, just give people something to look forward to every day. We, we you know, share um, ideas for shows to watch and books to read and recipes. There's lots of photos of people with their, you know, either epic fails or their great successes because everybody's become a great chef these days. So it's it's been a really great outlet for people. It's been really well, well received. That's great. Th that's definitely a great idea, you know, and, and we can keep thinking of more such activities, something that that just gets people together, that just connects them on a more human level. And it's not just always about let's discuss what's happening. Let's have a meeting. Let's have a review again. So those are things that are really important. Great. Uh, Christine, do you mind if we take a couple of questions because we're getting a few questions from the audience, yeah. right? OK, so um, we've got a question from Tracy. Um, do you mean that leaders need to be more intentional about building and spreading their work, uh, their company culture? I do. I th I think so. Um, I think that you know, again, um, th the the culture is the manifestation of a company's mission and their values. Um, and I think that you know, once those are defined, if they're defined, um, if that's something that's important to the organization, then 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 the technology is just the the amplification of that, or the thing that allows you to kind of megaphone it out. And so, um, you know, I think that, that that is 
that is what unites people, right? Understanding what a company mission is, what the values are, what, what leadership cares about, what we're all going to anchor around and make sure that all of our work ladders up and into. Um, I, I think... I just think the next generation and probably the generation after that in the workforce is a generation that really values that kind of transparency, that kind of, um, you know, corporate responsibility to something, to a purpose that is larger than just making profits. I think that's really important to, you know, attract and retain and, and, and grow with what is going to be a very dynamic workforce over the next couple of years. So um, I think it's incumbent on leadership to, you know, to really define what that culture, you know, what those values are and how that, um, you know, feeds into the culture. I feel, yeah. Sorry, something back. happened. <laughs> so yeah, you were saying. I don't know. Did you? I don't know where I got disconnected. So we'll just pick up the next question. Okay. I think uh, we fairly covered the cultural aspect of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, we do have this one question from Pablo, who's asking: There are certain regions which are not as prepared to transition to a remote work practice. One of those is Latin America. So is there something that you can propose as a strategy or an approach on how to deploy uh, or how to get more organizations in Latin America to adopt a remote work or remote first practice? So any any kind of advice? or strategy or tips for organizations in Latin America on how they can adopt a remote work practice here? Yeah, I love this question because I will tell you that workplace in Latin America, it's, it's just one of our strongest regions and one of the strongest markets. Adoption um, is, is incredibly strong for workplace um, in Latin America. And I, and I suspect that that's highly correlated with just how strong the adoption is for Facebook there. I mean, it is, um, it is a region that, you know, there's very high usage of Facebook and, and all, of the, um, all of the apps that are within um, the Facebook Inc. umbrella. Um, so we've seen really strong adoption. I think, again, this is this really comes down to just the accessibility of the platform. It's one that is primarily accessed vis-a-vis -a, -vis a mobile device, and, and everybody has access to a mobile device where, uh, you know, uh, maybe they don't have, have uh, laptop computers, and it doesn't require a corporate email address. Even, even to be um, included in the corporate instance, workplace instance, it does not require an email address. So really, really low barrier for um, adoption in Latin America with just the, um, you know, the strength of the brand and the awareness of, of the platform in that region has led to what we have seen to be very strong adoption. Right. So uh, if you're okay, we'll just take one final question before we end this session today. Uh, Naveen has an interesting question. Which practices would become irrelevant post-crisis? Are there certain things that organizations uh, sort of refuse to accept today or those things would become irrelevant or go out of practice as we move through this crisis and we evolve out of it. Oh my gosh, I love that question. I'd love to ask. I'd love to hear other people's perspective on this. Again, maybe this is just my own my own um, hope, but I really, I, I really hope that we look at. Um, things that enable more flexibility and don't require us to physically be moving around so much. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to having more virtual um, ex meetings with clients, um, QBRs, quarterly business reviews, things of that nature, where maybe I'm not spending, you know, a day's worth of travel on an airplane, but being able to just do it virtually. Um, I mean, look, I know there's nothing nothing that can be substituted really for in person. Um, but I don't know if the, you know, if the, if the additional value of being in person is worth, you know, just the cost to people's health to the, you know, to, to, to the climate and, and, and just our time that the cost of our time. Um, so I'm really hoping that we have more flexibility and that, um, you know, travel is something um, that we, that we're just more responsible about. And I guess I'm speaking for myself because I, I literally wasn't on an airplane every, every week this year uh, up until the crisis. And so, um, you know, it's been a dramatic change for me and pause for me personally. And it's really made me rethink, you know, what was the, what was the value of me being in person and in, in, in all these meetings? So, um, yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, flexibility and technology will become centerpiece and a lot of uh, restrictions that we used to have earlier would not be relevant anymore because people have now realized that it's possible to get a lot of things done even when you're just working virtually because not everything requires a meeting in person, right? But of course, you can never replace the in-person touch, but 90% of the things yeah. that re really don't require you to be present in the same room. Uh, great. Perfect. Uh, this was really great, Christine. Thank you so much. Is there anything you would like to add oh, towards pleasure. the end? 
No, just wishing everybody good health and and uh, and and to be safe right now. Thank you for having me. It was a real pleasure, and we'll make sure that we add all your uh, the resources and that remote work guide Absolutely. that you were mentioning earlier. Yes. So it's going to come across in the email as well, and it's going to be on our resource page on our website as well. So once it. again, thank you so much, and thank uh, you.